Well, today is moving day, so I figured it would be a great opportunity to show you how I load uh, the car onto the car dolly so that we can uh, tow our tiny little Hyundai Elantra behind our motorhome. First things first, uh, a car dolly uh, was not my first option, but we are in a hurry to leave Florida, and this one became available for sale for right around $1,000 at the same dealership I bought this from so it just kind of made sense but I'm gonna show you how to load a car up on here it is rated for 3,500 pounds now that includes the weight of the car dolly itself so that is right around 2,900 pounds you do the math we're like right at the limit so once you've attached the safety chains you've got it hitched up and the brake cable plugged in uh, you're ready to load the car there's a couple different uh, brands and makes of car dollies, but essentially they're all kind of the same in their operation and what vehicles can be towed with them. Uh, so just do your research. But the master tow works for our Hyundai Elantra GT um, just fine because it's a front wheel drive and the rear wheels just kind of spin when we're driving down the road. So right here, you will see a pin. And we'll take that pin out That'll allow the ramps to lower to the ground, and you can drive the car up. Now, I'd be lying if I said I had never driven off without replacing the, uh, the ramp pin. So I like to put it right here, just in case I drive off. I've still got it. Before I'm about to load the car up, this piece right here, that is the only moving piece on this. So I like to make sure that it's somewhat straight, kind of just kick it into place. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just so that the wheels hit it at roughly the same time. Now, because I always forget, this is the point at which I like to put the, the ramp pin back in. I'll double check it later, but <laughs> very critical. So when I'm bringing the car up on the car dolly, uh, I like to bring the tires all the way forward, obviously, but then I just like to just barely dimple the tire onto this stop block. That way, when I'm tightening the tire straps down, I know it's got a nice snug fit. Now that the car is up on the car dolly, we're gonna go inside and make sure the car is actually ready, then we'll come back outside and secure the tires. Now that the car is up on the ramp, it needs to be in park. Uh, I know what you're thinking, the car needs to be in neutral so the wheels are free spinning, but this is a front wheel drive car. The rear tires are the only ones touching the ground. The front tires are stopped by the car being in park. If I were to engage the parking brake, that would lock up the rear tires. We do not put the emergency brake on. We do put the car in park. So car in park, emergency brake off. Next, turn off the ignition. Now that the ignition is off, we lock the steering wheel. You do not want the tires that are on the ramp turning. If for whatever reason you cannot uh, lock your steering wheel or you want to be doubly safe, you can wrap the seat belt around the steering wheel. Uh, I don't do that, uh, but just to let you know it is an option. Now that the car is in park, the emergency brake is off and the steering wheel is locked, it's time to go put the tire straps on. Hey buddy, what you doing? I'm helping you to fix the car. You want to hand me stuff? Mm-hmm, right now. Okay. Now we're ready to secure the car. Uh, I like to work in a somewhat methodical fashion, that way I know I've got it done the same way every time. Hey buddy, can you hand me the uh, safety chain? Thanks bro. This is a type of safety chain. Uh, some of them are actual chains. This one is just a, uh, a plastic coated cable. Yeah, um, it is. Cool, cool cable. So each safety chain is rated for, I believe, 2,000 pounds, which isn't the entire weight of the vehicle, but keep in mind this is just for emergencies if the tire straps were to break and the car was ready to roll off. I've pulled this thing without tire straps on just short distances. It wants to stay on the ramp. Really, this is a redundancy to a redundancy. You'll want to run the safety chains through the frame of the car, uh, but you'll need to leave some slack because the suspension needs to be able to bounce 
on the ramp still. So it can't be too tight. I found with the Hyundai Elantra that there is a very convenient, maybe not so convenient, hole uh, in this arm going to the tire. I don't know what the name of that is, but I run this end through that hole. Each vehicle is a little bit different, so you'll just have to find something that works for your vehicle. Um, so now I'm going to do the other side. Now that the safety chains are on, it's time to move on to the tire straps. Tire straps come in a variety of styles, uh, so I'm not going to get too uh, detailed in how these operate, uh, but I will kind of show you the basic anatomy. I mean, you've got a hook here that hooks on to the car ramp. You've got the basket that sits over the tire like this. You've got a tightening mechanism, uh, which is just to kind of snug up the slack. And then your loose end, which goes into the ratchet, so you can actually legitimately tighten down the tires. So I'll take this hook, and I'll hook that bar. I want it centered on the tire. Different cars are going to have different wheel bases, so that's why they've got three different bars. This one kind of matches up in the middle, so I'm going to put it on the middle bar. With the hook in place, I'll now put the basket over the tire. You want to make sure that the webbing is flat. You don't want any twists in it. You also don't want, on the other side of the tire, you don't want that impinging on any brake lines, any... Uh, you really don't want it impinging on anything. So uh, just take a look underneath, make sure it's clear. At this point, nothing really has to be tight. It just needs to be snug, uh, so not a whole lot of slack. I'll take this loose end, making sure everything is nice and flat. This ratchet mechanism needs to be in the middle of the tire, which it is. And I'm going to feed this loose end through the barrel. You want to take up most of the slack because if, if I started ratcheting right here, I would fill up that barrel with webbing and I wouldn't be able to tighten it all the way. So. We take up most of the slack, release it, and then just start tightening. Now we are looking for dimpling here. That's how I kind of know that I've got it tight enough. Once you're satisfied with how tight it is, I take the excess and I feed it through here. Just so it's dressed and looks pretty. Now that that side is done, it's time to do the driver's side. So now this car is ready to tow. I like to do one last safety check before pulling away, starting at the back of the RV all the way into the driver's seat, just to make sure everything has been done. Safety chains attached, seven-way plugs in, hitches attached correctly, the ramp pin is in, safety cables attached, tire straps are tightened, steering wheel is locked, the car is in park, and the emergency brake is off. With all those things done, you are ready to tow. Your state might require working lights attached to the car. This car dolly has turn signals and brake lights on it. I am not required to put on auxiliary lights. You'll have to check with your state's laws. The car dolly in my home state of Florida is also not required to be registered as a trailer. So you'll just have to check your state's laws. Uh, other than that, we're good to go. When you're ready to unload the car, it's really just as simple as walking backwards through the steps, taking the straps off, taking the safety chains off, taking the ramp pin out, uh, which is very important because if you back off without taking that pin out, you could really damage something, and then just rolling off the car dolly. Ideally, you want to be on somewhat level ground when you're loading and unloading this car, but it doesn't have to be perfect. In order to get the steering wheel unlocked, put the key in the ignition, 
pull slightly on the wheel, and then you can turn the key further. The car's on, and it's unlocked. In order to release the toe strap when you're, when you're ready to unload the car, you pull down on this release mechanism, and then open, open the jaws up. Now, in order to release the tension, this needs to be fully extended. If you'll notice, my model of car blocks this from happening, which is where that handy dandy flathead screwdriver comes in. So inside this ratchet mechanism, you will see a tiny hole. And what we'll do is we'll leverage the screwdriver with that hole and push down. Then I'm able to open it up. And take the strap out. You always want to close this up so that in case you are towing the tow dolly empty, it's not dragging along the ground and scraping. So now I'm going to show you how quick I can unload this car. Uh, this isn't full speed, but you know, just to show you it doesn't take that long. Not too bad.